Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to New Life Pentecostal Church, where we believe you can be rescued, redeemed, and restored. At this time, we're going to hand it over to our pastor to make the announcement. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. It's good to be here tonight. Good to be in church. Amen. Amen. Why don't we give the Lord a rousing hand of praise? Let's stand to our feet. Everybody, come on, let's praise the Lord. God's good. Amen. Amen. I, amen. Why don't you turn with a smile on your face? And tell your neighbor you're glad to see them here tonight. Amen. Amen. It is good to be here. All right. You, when you greet somebody, you can be seated. Amen. All right. As always, it's good to have you here. Uh, Tuesday night work activities uh, will not be going on much longer. We're almost finished. A few more days and we'll have everything wrapped up. For the kids, because I get a lot of phone calls and checks about this, uh, we started last night putting up the steel supports for the basketball goals. We got the rails put up for one side of the gym. Friday afternoon, we're going to put up the other side. And then uh, we've got some other things after that you have to do, but it's begun. So we are excited. Amen. Our kids are excited. I'm looking at you, Levi. You called me. Are you excited? All right, good deal. <laughs> Amen. All right, also tomorrow night at 7 o'clock p.m. is addiction recovery. And we are, this slide here does not reflect the new name change. And we do have a new slide. We'll get that changed. But it is moving forward recovery. Moving forward. Amen. We are, we are totally sort of turning the whole addiction recovery ministry upside down in the, the last month before we go into the new year because it's a good, if you're going to do something, might as well do it at the beginning of the year. But really changing the focus over how a lot of addiction recovery ministries have operated. Um, instead of focusing on the recovery so much, start focusing on what's in front of us instead of what's behind us so much. Amen. And so we're excited about that. Amen. Continue to pray. Share that with someone. And uh, I believe God's going to continue to work. Also, I want to encourage you to be in prayer. We should be closing the church permanent loan this Friday if everything goes well. Amen. That's exciting. <laughs> Amen. With that said, make sure that you're continuing to be faithful in your giving and supporting the house of God. If you don't tithe, I'm encouraging you to be a tither. Amen. There is a blessing in giving. Amen? I can say that. I believe it. I have seen it. I know God works. Amen. And uh, you can't outgive God, and there's no blessing in robbing God. Just let that sit there. Amen. But give, the Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Also, daily Bible reading schedule. How many of you still reading your Bible? Seven or eight of you. That's good. How many of you still reading your Bible? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're very close. If you know that you're going to complete your Bible through this year, go ahead and give your name to Sister Bean. I know that we've got the month of December left, but if you know if, you're up, if you've made it this far, you know you're going to finish it. So let Sister Bean know because we're going to honor you the first of the year because uh, it is an accomplishment to complete your whole Bible in a year. Amen. And I want to encourage you, if you didn't, next year could be your year. All right, also, uh, I want to thank everyone that participated in Outreach Sunday afternoon. We had a great crowd. Sister Brittany Cheetah, you did a great job uh, also with broadcasting out to the out Outreach team, every area that was covered after the fact. Great job, and I know that we're going to see, and we are seeing already, but we're going to continue to see people walk through these doors as a result of evangelism. Amen? And then... This is important. Uh, our Silver Sisters are having their spaghetti lunch this Friday from 11 until 2, $10 a plate. If you're in Columbiana and you don't come by this church to get lunch Friday, shame on you. They sold 60 plates, 70 plates probably, probably 70 plates last week. And you cannot get a lunch for $10 at a fast food place in this town. Amen. And I'll be honest with you. Brother, Brother Dennis and I. We were running late. And we got here at 
and we got our lunch last Friday, and it was a fantastic lunch. But uh, support the church, support the ladies. Uh, then next Tuesday night is a very important night here at the church, and I did not do a good job Sunday announcing this, and I'm really going to have to make up for it tonight and then this coming Sunday. It is our blessing service. So that is our Thanksgiving service. We're going to have a meal. It is not a potluck, but it is a themed Thanksgiving meal. And so Sister Laura ha has a menu. It is a typical Thanksgiving menu. So if you are interested in bringing something, if you'll see her, she'll show you what we've got. We've sort of got a meal based off how many we think is going to be here. We've got proportions set aside, what have you. Please come see Sister Laura. She'll give you something to bring uh, or, you know, something that, that you're comfortable cooking, that, that's your thing, that's on that menu of what we're going to do. And it's going to be a testimony service. As we're eating, we're going to have some worship music playing slightly. Uh, and then there's going to be an opportunity to, for after everybody's seated and eating to come up and share a word of testimony about what God has done in your life this last year. And I'm excited about that. So please, be thinking about that. Be thinking about your testimony. I don't want to have to poke and prod and like nudge you to give a testimony. You know God's done something for you. Amen? Amen. There should be no hesitation in standing up and saying what God's done in your life. Also, ladies' Christmas party is December the 1st. Uh, we'll be here at the church. There it is, December the 1st, immediately after service. Uh, it will be in the Family Life Center. Uh, there is a Dirty Santa gift exchange. If you'd like to participate, uh, bring a gift that's around $20 value. Um, you don't have to like run the numbers on that, but just get close. Also, please bring a snack to share, and if you do that, there'll be enough for everyone. Uh, but that's it. Also, snack cakes for inmates. That's the jail ministries. Uh, Give back to the, to the inmates that we do every December. Bring those in and have them turned in by December the 11th. We've already had an enormous amount collected and brought in, uh, both from inside this church and outside the walls of the church. Also, the angel tree in the foyer, Sister Laura. How, how goes the angel tree? Need, we still have a lot to pick up. All right, so I'm asking you tonight, let's... Let's let it be like the Grinch stole the ornaments tonight when you leave. Let's get those angel tree gifts off the tree. A, a star is one gift for one child. An angel is every gift for a child. Please don't leave it down to three people to buy every gift on that tree the last week before Christmas. Help us out. Let's get that done. Also, the Addiction Recovery Ministry Moving Forward Recovery is uh, a winter clothing, winter uh, cold weather uh, attire drive. So blankets, uh, this can be new or used items. Please, let's get those turned in. All right, let's stand together tonight. We're about to worship the Lord. I know there was a lot of, a lot of announcements. I'm looking. I've missed one. Yes. Boys and girls Bible study tonight. Boys and girls Bible study will be... In the other building. We do this once a month. Also, I gave some bad information today to someone. I'm going to fix it now. Starting in January, once a month, we will have a hyphen meeting too. What hyphen is, uh, that odd age when you have, uh, you're out of high school, but you don't feel like you're old yet. But you're not, let me, let me, let me be more specific. You're not married. You're still like that young adult. I got some 80-year-olds like, I'm not old. I don't feel old. No, you're not married. You're an un... <laughs> Let me, so I clarified that. Uh, and it, basically, you're that college and career type age. We're going to be meeting once a month. So that's important, uh, and it's good, and because we do recognize you're not kids anymore, but you also don't feel like you're over the hill quite yet either. So, all right, I want to ask the music team to come at this time. We're going to worship the Lord. How many of you have come to praise God tonight? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for your blessings, your mercy, your goodness, and all of your grace. We ask, Lord, that you be in the house tonight. God, move in this place. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together.
we could have the ushers take up tonight's tithes and offerings. I did not see the signal. Everybody's laughing at me. All right, the ushers come. If we could, let's pray over the offering tonight. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you, God, for blessing us. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity and day to be in your house this hour. We ask, God, that you bless, Lord, the work of God in this place and help us, God, to give back to your house and do it with a glad heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's bring our offering and tithes tonight as we worship. Life, play. 
worship the Lord. Lift your hands and praise Him. All my life, all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath, with every breath that I am able, able, lift up your name. I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Running after me with my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after, running after me. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me with my life laid down i surrender now i give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me all my life you have been Let's praise the Lord together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Before we dismiss our classes, I'm going to ask if Brother Jess and Sister Joyce to come up. I'm going to pray for both of them. They both uh, have a need tonight, and so I want to pray over them. I'd like some sisters and brothers to come up and help me pray for them tonight. And if there's anybody else here tonight that needs special prayer, I want you to come. Sweetheart, you come up here too. I know you've got a surgery coming up. And we're going to pray for Jewel too. Brother Jess, you step over here so some of the brothers can pray with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to pray over Sister Joy, Sister Jewel, Brother Jess. Amen. Let's pray together. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come tonight. Believe in God that you're going to meet the need, that you're going to touch her body. We ask, Lord, God, that you would... Church, let's believe just a moment that our God is a healer, that our God is a guiding hand, that he's a prince of peace, and he can give us hope in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we believe, God, that you're moving in our midst. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This time I'm going to ask that our boys and girls and our children be carefully dismissed. All right, let's pray for the sister. We're standing in for his sister, correct? In the name of Jesus, we pray over them tonight. Lord, we believe, God, that you're going to meet that need, that challenge, Lord, dear God. Lord, that you're moving, God, on behalf of that need. We rebuke that need. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. I believe, God, that you are a healer in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. Amen. I know we've... Just lost a bunch of children and a bunch of folks to, cl uh, to class tonight. But we've got a great uh, treat lined up. Brother Avalos uh, is going to be preaching for us tonight. And I appreciate him. Uh, I had a, a meeting scheduled. I didn't think I was going to make it in time for church to even begin. And he, he was able to fill in and I appreciate that. So why don't we greet him tonight as he comes to the pulpit. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. What an honor it is to be with you tonight. Amen. I can tell you when I'm on the road, amen, I think of y'all often. 
and I want to see y'all have great church, which I know you do. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. We love your church family this evening. I love mine. Amen. I think of y'all a lot. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn me to a very familiar passage of Scripture, Revelations chapter 3 and verse 14. If you have it, say amen. If you don't, say hold on. <laughs> amen. Now, I've heard this preached before, and I've heard this preached a whole lot of times. I'm going to try to preach it a little bit different. But the reason that I wanted a board up is because I've seen a Baptist preacher do this years and years and years ago. What he did was, he put an H on one side, and he, put a, and he had everybody in the audience come up there on the board, and they had marked down H or C. You put hot over here. And you put cold over here. And what he was doing was he was setting the audience up because most people, if they ask you, hey, where your walk with, where's your walk with God right now? Most of the folks put that it was in the middle. Yeah. And so I seen that years and years and years ago, and I thought that was good, and that come to my mind tonight. Amen, because, amen, I was one of them in the church that put mine probably about there in the middle. I, I probably lied then because I wasn't really in the middle. I was probably more close to cold. Amen. I know none of y'all would lie tonight but where you're at tonight, but amen. Hallelujah. Verse 14, the angel of the church of the latter sins write, These things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. He said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of thy mouth. Y'all can be seated tonight. That don't sound very good, does it? Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest, mayest be rich in white raiment and thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. And as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Now, I want to open this up with a question tonight. Now, there are churches that Jesus was right, that John wrote to. Amen. And this was probably, this wasn't the worst church that he wrote to. As a matter of fact, when he wrote to Ephesus, he had threatened them. He told them that they were content, pretty much close to the same thing. But he had told them that he said, you know, they bothered the Lord so bad, Brother Shane, that he told them in the Ephesians, he told them that I'll take your candlestick away from you. That's what he said. Candlestick, we know, represents the light. The Holy Ghost, you spoke on the light last week. Amen. And so, it was very dangerous for the Ephesians. And, and just follow me just for a little while. And, and, and so, amen, he, he gets to Latter-day Sea, and it's the last church he's talking to. And he, he finds things that's wrong with their walk with God. Now, the question I want to ask you tonight is Jesus is talking to the church, right? Now, I want to know... But the, here's a question I want to ask you because I always like audience participation. But the Bible said that just right before that, that Jesus was standing and knocking at the door. Now my question is, why is Jesus standing and knocking at the door and telling them to come in to his own church? Boy, I knew it was going to get that quiet right there. Amen? Now this is the church. He's writing a letter to the church, but he's trying to tell them, hey, I... I'm, I'm, I'm writing this to you, but, but I'm trying to knock at the door. Somewhere along the line, y'all have kind of let up on some things, and I'm not no longer in the church. I'm on the outside looking in. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Mm. And you can, that's good. You can write it down. Amen. And we've got to be careful because you can be around... And I want to just preach from a little thought. I don't even have a title tonight. Brother Ty called me, blew up my phone, text me. What is your title? And I, I don't really have a title tonight. I would just say that let's just look at, at our lives tonight and see, you know, we're going in the holiday season. Amen. And what does Christmas actually mean? Amen. 
if you do look at it in the Hispanic, if it's Spanish, Christ more. It should be more of Christ during Christmas season, not less. That's why I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And so we've got to understand that even though this times we're going to spend with our family and times we're going to spend, and I love Thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, I get aggravated that these folks, they don't put their Christmas lights up and their Christmas trees up, and they forget all about Thanksgiving. Now, I don't know, some of you may do that. That's fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw no stones at you, but I feel like the world, they, they want to bypass because I don't know about you, but Christmas ain't the same as what it used to be, not to me. If you don't believe that, go in a store on Black Friday. And see a bunch of women fighting over pillows that are $5 a piece. Amen. Hallelujah. And you think the season, you thought, you're thinking, man, they got Santa Claus shirts and they got shirts about Christmas, but they're ready to bust each other up, Sister Laura, when it comes to a few $5 pillows. That was not the last time I ever been Christmas shopping on Black Friday, by the way. It's a show. Amen. Hallelujah. And you got to be careful because we could get involved in all that. I can tell you that Christmas was ruined for me. Amen. And I'm going to get to the message. Just, just follow me. But Christmas was ruined with me when my family, they're big on gifts. They're big on gifts. And I, I'm, I'm not against gifts. You know, I'm, I'm fine with all that. But, but it was one year they had went and they wanted to outspend the other. And they had spent thousands. I had noticed they had spent thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. And I'm sitting there saying, telling them, because I'm the preacher of the family, and i got to tell them something, that you're missing the whole point. And a lot of times, because we've been in church so long, we really miss the point of church. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And we can get too casual with our walk with God. We can get too casual with the things of God. Amen. That's why I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And especially during the holiday season when we've got family and we've got things that we're thinking about. But we've got to be careful because the most important thing in our life right now is our walk with God. And where we're at with God right now. Amen. Hallelujah. And so you've got to understand that when he's speaking to these people, he's upset because they're not hot and they're not cold. They're just lukewarm. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I can drink hot chocolate with the best of them. I don't like hot, a lukewarm hot chocolate. Amen. There's a lot of stuff, Bishop, that's not good that's warm. Amen. And we've got to be careful because in our walk with God, we can be content with feeling. Let me tell you something tonight. Just because you feel God don't mean you're right with God. Just because you come to church 24-7, that don't mean you're right with God. He's talking to people in the church. He's not talking to people outside the church. He's talking to people in the church. Amen. You come and you sit here and listen to sermon after sermon, but you don't change. You come into church, and every time you come into church, hey, it's good that you pay your tithes. It's good that you give offering, and that's all great and fine and dandy, and we need to. But let me tell you something. If you're lukewarm tonight, that may be, you know, you may be, I see people a lot of times, it ain't just this church, but a lot of churches. When come holiday season, they forget about their tithes and offering. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-oh. I stand behind you when I say it, so they'll throw the tomatoes at you and not me. Amen. See, that's all part about being lukewarm. Is your gifts more important than what you're giving? Oh, to God. It'll get good, I promise you. But I can tell you tonight, amen, as God is searching your heart, amen, do you just come to church to be seen or to be heard, amen? Or do you really come to church to be changed? Because every church service that we're in, amen, is an atmosphere that we should have, that we should change and try to be better for God, not worse. Now, that's not to say we don't have bad days. Don't get me wrong. Amen. We all have bad days. We all got days where the enemy fights us. Amen. This is going to get real good, I promise you. Amen. But I can tell you that tonight that it it don't matter as far as the problems or the situations you go through. Amen. What God is really looking for is he's looking for people that will be constant in what they're doing. Because you can get really, I mean, it's a routine, you know. It's a routine. We just come to church and get in the routine. But you got to understand that God hates routines. Well, I pray an hour a day. I fast two times in a week. Yeah, but the publican over there, he's over there praying to God, and he's, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And the Bible said that the other publican went to the house of the Lord. He went away better off than the other man did. See, they're giving him his credentials. Hey, we got all this stuff. We got these new houses. We got this land. I see it all the time, Brother Shane. We got these Christians all the time, and they forget about the God that give them all that stuff. See, we need to realize during the holiday season who we have tonight. Boy, I feel him right now. You think tonight, amen, and I'm going to, I'll get good, I promise you. Just hold on, just follow me a little while. You think tonight, 
Amen. As there's churches going across the world going on right now. And thank God for Wednesday night service. As a matter of fact, the UPC just come up with an article a few years ago. 66% of people who do not show up on Wednesday nights end up backsliding and getting out of church. So Brother York, we don't see that Wednesday nights are important and Tuesday night work days are important. And I, tell, I was telling them the other day, I mean, we were talking about getting work done around the church. And they said, you know, on Tuesdays are work days, amen, we barely can get 10 people to show up. Amen? Boy, it's quiet right now. That's another church that wasn't here, but if it hits you, it fits you. Amen? Hallelujah. I know how it is, brother. I know how it is when you call a work day and ain't nobody shows up but the pastor. Amen. I remember this young cat we're at church with. And uh, I'll get to preaching in a minute, brother. But I, I remember he, he ain't made one church work day, Sister Bean. Not one. So it's 150 degrees outside and he decides that he makes one church work day. And he's going to complain because our pastor's 65 and I'm 40. And he's going to complain because we're sitting down on a job. And I looked at him. I said, you know, you may could take a break or two more. Amen. If you show up to work day more. See, the things you love, amen, you'll end up showing what you love. I feel the Lord tonight, amen. I know it's going to be different tonight, okay? But you've got to understand that God, when he comes back, he wants to come back for people that are on fire. No, not just to get a little service or two. Not just get one service or two on fire. See, when he wants to come back to a church that's on fire, that's on fire, that's on fire, that the revival is there, amen. Not just a few days of revival. Not just a few moments of revival. He wants your walk with God to be a revival. Amen. Hallelujah. So he comes to this church and he's telling them, look, you know, you've got all this stuff. He said, hey, you got all the, I counsel thee to buy gold tried in the fire because you think that you're rich. You think you've got all this stuff. Let me tell you something. It's not about the blessings that you have. That's fine and dandy. It's about the blesser. Because you can fall in love with your blessings and fall out of love with the person that's blessing you. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. And that's what he was complaining about in the letter C in church. Look, guys, amen, you're coming in here. You say you think that you're right with God. You think that you've got it all down pat with God. You think that you're right with me, but you're really not. Well, I knew that was going hit, to hit the wall. Brother Shane, can I use you and your wife? Have you ever been in the doghouse without knowing it? Now, Sister Laura ain't in here, but you have. <laughs> I don't have to ask that. Anybody else? Okay. I remember I was dating somebody years and years and years ago. And it was the first time in a relationship I'd ever talked to a door before because she got so mad at me, she would not want to talk to me. I know you all don't go through that because y'all are Pentecostal and you're real spiritual. And Brother Allen, you, you're newlyweds. You don't have to go through that. But I had to went through that one time. And I'm trying to beg her because, baby, I want to talk to you. I want to look you face to face. I don't like talking to this door. And I don't like you saying, get away from the door. You don't love me no more. Have any of you ever got that? Yeah. So I'm knocking on this door. You know, I look like an idiot. Now, the parents are in there. Now, we're sitting there eating, okay? All right, let me just tell you the story because it's, I mean, I look bad at it, but I look bad at half the stuff I tell. Amen? So I'm sitting there, and we're sitting there. Now, we're fixing to get married, and, and, and so I'm working just hard, hard, hard. I just bought this house. I'm going to surprise her. Man, the ring, the house, because we talked about getting the house. Her parents wanted us to live with them. I said, no, though, that ain't happening. I'm making a point. That's why. Okay, okay. Are you good over there? Okay, okay. Don't sweat over there. I'm sweating. Okay, you're okay. All right. So I'm working all this time. Man, I'm working. I'm, I'm working. I'm not spending much time. I'm not even texting her that much. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to take care of the church. I'm, I mean, I'm trying to do everything I know I can do. And Sister Bean, I didn't realize I was in trouble until I get to the dinner table. And she cooks a meal. And the meal is delicious. But I knew something was going on because she wouldn't talk to me during the meal. Now, I know, Bishop, you don't do that to your wife. Your wife don't do that to you. But I'm telling you, I, I mean, that was, whew. Brother Allen, it was quiet, buddy. Her head's down. What's wrong, baby? Nothing. Well, now, something's got to be wrong because you're not talking to me. Nothing. We're not going to talk about it right now. 
And now, now the parents and the brothers and the whole family, the soon-to-be in-laws, are wanting to know, amen, what in the world, Brother York, is going on? Now, I don't think I'm in the doghouse. I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to be doing because I'm the man, you know. And I've got all this going on, you know. I'm just a surpriser and everything, amen. And the last thing I expected was to talk to a door. She gets up, embarrasses me in front of everybody, goes, starts crying. You don't love me no more. And she goes into the door. It was about 30 minutes before I could get her out. And after I got her out, her face was pitch red. She was mad. You know what she was mad about? She wasn't mad about anything else but the lack of time that I had spent with her. Over, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Over the last two or three weeks that I was doing. See, we can get too busy in our lives where we spend time with other things instead of spending time with who we're supposed to spend time with. Hmm. That's what he's complaining about in this scripture. That's what he's aggravated about. You're coming to have church. You've got to be careful tonight because we can follow the same path that Samson did. Samson thought he could break all the rules and really break whatever he could do and do whatever he wanted to do and still thought he could have a relationship with God, Brother Dennis. Am I preaching? Yeah. And they think that whatever he did behind closed doors won't come out because, you know, but it did though. His lack, his shallowness of his walk with God showed up because, amen, when he needed God to show up, he could care less about it. His walk with God never mattered to him. It wasn't precious to him. The most important thing we have tonight, amen, is our walk with God. What are we going to show the next generation if we're not on fire for God? What are we going to give the next generation if we sit here and play church? Because that's what a lot of people do. And I'm not talking about anybody personally in here. But if the shoe fits, where I've been there. I, man, I, when, I first, when I first got introduced to y'all, man, I, I didn't know nothing about it. Man, I, I wasn't in church like I should have been. I played. I sure did. Every time I played, I got in trouble. Because God will get you. Because that fire will consume you. It'll either You either, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Amen. This, this is what we need in this last day and time is a church that's on fire. That when they walk into our churches, not only can they feel the love of God, but they feel the power and fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, but it's Wednesday night. No, 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 no. You don't understand. God don't have an off night. So we say that, well, it's Wednesday or it's Thursday or it's Tuesday. God ain't got an off night. God can do whatever he wants to whenever he wants to. Amen. See, that's the reason why a lot of folks, well, I want a word from God. Well, why can't you have a word from God? Maybe the reason you can't get a word from God is because you ain't got the relationship with God you need to. We all looking for a prophet or for a word of God. God wants to give us our own word. But if we have our own relationship with God and our own fire for God and want to see God move and bless. Let me tell you something. The most worst word in the Bible I feel like when Moses was out there with Jethro, he'd been there 40 years. The Bible said that Moses was content. And that's what I'm afraid of. We can get content in our walk with God. Mm -hmm. And we start saying, well, I show up to church every Sunday. Well, I, I pay my tithes. Well, pastor can count on me. Well, that's good. Those all things are good things. Amen. But that don't mean that's going to get you into heaven. And that don't mean that's going to get you where you need to be with God. See, because that's what the Laodiceans were doing. Hey, I want to give you our credentials. This is what we're doing. We're blessed. You said preach it. I'm trying to preach what God gave me. I won't be much longer. This ain't going to be no much longer. Let me ask you something tonight. If you were to relate, if you were to, to, to rate your walk with God from 1 to 10, where would it be tonight? Could God count on you? Mm. Boy, it's quiet right now, Pastor. You should have just preached tonight. I told you you could have had it tonight. Let me ask you something tonight. Are you a blessing to your man of God? Or does your man of God worry about your soul? Mm. Let me ask you another question. I know we're going to get a little deep for a few moments. I'll stop in 10 minutes. Amen. Would you want to pastor you? Oh, it's getting deep, ain't it? Mm. No, I'm asking because, amen. Look, 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 look. Okay. Let me tell you something about me, okay? I wasn't raised in church, and, and so I see now, and it's for another message, but I see a lot of times these second and third and fourth generations don't really appreciate it like the first generations do. 
See, I couldn't come in here. I was bound when I was going to the Catholic church. I was bound when I went to the Baptist church. Y'all, when I come into y'all's presence, man, y'all had it. Y'all were fiery. Y'all, and I'm not saying we don't have that here. But I'm saying is, man, if you could get everybody on the same team, amen. If you could get everybody on the same team, you don't just two or three on fire for God. But you get churches, there used to be that way. See, we can't put all the pressure on our man of God and our bishop to do all the praying, all the studying, all the working, all the, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. All the praying, all the fasting. That ain't fair for him. That's not his, totally his job. You know, I'll tell you what, the pastor and the bishop and the minister of this church don't dictate where the church is going. Now, God gives them visions. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. It's up to the people, amen, when we preach or a man of God preaches or your pastor preaches to tell you, hey, Lord, pastor, we'll follow you. We know you're following God because we want a church that will end up changing lives, not a church that just touches somebody. The problem is we get too comfortable with our little goosebumps and we get too comfortable, amen, with our walk with God, amen, when God's got way more and more and more for each and every one of us. Well, I feel him. Amen. You think that Moses, out of all people, he talked to God face to face. But it wasn't enough with him. He said, oh, no, 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 no. I've talked to you face to face long enough. He said, now I want to see you. Mm, I feel him right now. See, we get too content with a word or we get too content with a few scriptures, amen. But when's the last time you had gotten to your prayer closet and said, hey, Lord, I just don't want to hear you today. I want to see you. I don't want to be comfortable in God and lose my soul. That's good, ain't it? And that's where they were at. And we got to be careful because this is the holiday season, Sister Bean. Amen. This is a season where more people kill themselves and more people get depressed and things that are going on. They need to see the fire of God inside of us. They need to see the joy of the Lord inside of us. They need to see a church, amen, on fire. Amen. Now, ask you something. If you were tonight one of Jesus' disciples, would you be in the inner circle? Boy, I'm feeling right now. I know it's tough right now, but it's going to get better. Would you? I'm asking because I'm asking. I'm just trying to be real tonight. Amen. I, 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 just, I, I, I felt this all day long, but I kind of battled with this. I said, Lord, this is kind of strong. Pastor Josh has been doing such a phenomenal job. And when I seen you here tonight, I said, man, you could go ahead and preach. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead and teach something great tonight. But I'm going to tell you something. God hates routines. He hates rituals. That's why he got down on the Pharisees and Sadducees because they were coming. To, they, nobody go to church to the synagogue more than they did. But they weren't helping nobody. Because they weren't changing. Let me tell you something. Every time we should come to church, we should change. Every time we come to church, amen, we should try to get better. Every time we come to church, amen. I know we've got problems. I know we're going through things. Amen. I know we've got stuff going on in our life. I I can tell you, I've got a lot of stuff going on in my life. But I refuse to allow that to affect my relationship with God. Ooh, I feel it right now. Okay. So where were you at tonight if you're not in the inner circle? Are you in the outer circle? Sister Bean, you said a mouthful right there. Could Jesus trust you? Would you be one of the men of God, amen, that Jesus could talk to? Amen. When he had a problem or he had a burden. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost right now, Brother Houston. I feel it. I'm telling you tonight, Jesus has walked through here and come to this place tonight. This wonderful congregation, this beautiful people. People that I love. I love you so much. Y'all don't even realize how much I pray for you. I know I'm not here a whole lot. I know I'm out in the field. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, I'm representing this church every time I go out. Amen. And I refuse to get in the pulpit cold. I refuse to get in the pulpit unstudied. I get refused, amen, to preach to people, amen, and live one way and not live the right way. How are you representing your church tonight? 
I know, Brother Jess, it's tough tonight, but it's going to be better. I promise you. Amen. Let me ask you something. The Bible talks about in the book of John. I'm fixing to close this. We've got five minutes, okay? In the book of John where the Bible said that the disciples, Judas, had done betrayed him. And he's took a bunch of men in there. And they've got their staves and they've got their, their, their lights and they've got all their, their flames. And they're walking in there. And they're walking to Jesus. And they're walking because they're fixing to come get him. Because this hour of temptation has come upon the world. The hour of darkness, right? That's true. That's the Bible, right? But hear me out tonight, amen? When, it, it shocks me. We all overlook scripture because we look at where Jesus said, I am, and they all fall down backwards. Right? Who are you? Jesus said, I am he. They fall down backwards. All right? He does it again. Hey, I'm he. They fall down backwards. Let me ask you something. I want to ask a question. Let's open this up to the entire room. How in the world do them people not know what Jesus looked like? Right? This is Judas. Amen? But Brother Darrell, he don't understand. He don't know. He's even. Hey, where's Jesus at? I can tell you. I can give you an answer to it. Because when Judas walked in the garden, because them disciples had been walking with Jesus and had been talking with Jesus, that they started looking like Jesus. And they started, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And they started acting like Jesus. And they started talking like Jesus. So when Judas went in the garden, he didn't just see one Jesus. He seen another 11 Jesuses. Now I want to ask you today, when people outside in the world look at us, did they see us or did they see Jesus in us? I can't help nobody. They can see me all day long. I don't want them to see me because I'm not going to be able to help nobody. I may can give you a dollar. I may can give you a meal. But Jesus can give you a life-changing meal. Jesus can take you places where you never thought you are going to go. Amen. And that's what he's trying to tell us tonight. You better be careful tonight about your walk with God. Taking it easy. Amen. Because easy ain't going to get you nowhere. I remember... Because I wasn't always in church. I went to church, but I wasn't part of the church. Matter of fact, I didn't ever think I could be part of the church. Because I looked at these folks, and these folks lived so holy. And they lived so righteous. And they lived so good. Now, Brother Shane, we would render under some tough teaching, were we not? And I'm going to tell you, a lot of them lived it, though. They didn't play it. They lived it. Do you agree? They lived it. Now, you couldn't, you couldn't do a whole lot there, but they lived it. Amen? And they, their walk with God, they made me want to be better. When I got around them, when people get around you, do they want to be a better Christian? Well, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Can they feel the fire from you? And they say, hey, I want to be like you. I want to be, oh. When people walk in your presence, do you have a walk with God where they quit cussing? Or will they quit acting a fool? You know, I had something happen to me the other day. I hadn't happened in years. I was sitting there working in a truck last week, and Chuck walks up to me. Chuck, I've invited Chuck to church. We're going to have a whole bunch of them. You watch, a whole bunch of them, because I'm working on a whole bunch of them coming to church. Amen. And Chuck told me, he said, he walked out of there, and he told me, he said, he said, hey, i, I got to ask you a question. I said, what? He said, do you mind if I don't cuss around you? I said, oh, man, no, Lord. No, I'd rather you not cuss around me. I said, well, why do you, why do you act like that, Chuck? What, 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 what made you think that way? He said, I don't know. He said, being around you, he said, I, I just want to be a better person. I said, well, I, I, I want you to be a better person for Jesus. I don't want you to be a better person for me because that's not going to help you. He said, no, I want to quit cussing. I want to quit acting the way I am. Now, I want to ask, how are we impacting this world? Are we impacting them? Let me tell you something. Your relationship with God tonight Amen. I'm, I'm asking you because everybody in that church, there was very rarely that I can remember, amen, put a mark on the H or put a mark on the C. There was a few folks that put a mark on the C. Amen. But most of them put a mark close to where the, the middle was at. Boy, I feel him in the room. We can't expect this man to carry all the weight. 
we can't expect that. That's not how it works, church. That's not how it's supposed to work. Amen. It's supposed to work where we all help each other out. And if there's somebody that's holding God, let me tell you something. I'm not going to want to be around people. I'm 42 now. I don't want to be around people that are going to hinder my walk with God. I want to be around people that will help my walk with God, that will improve my walk with God, that will help me get closer to God than I've ever been because that's what it's all about. The closer to God we get and the farther away we get from this world, amen, is the closer that we'll get to where we want to go. I remember a story about a young lady. Brother Shane, she had problems with her boyfriend. That was one of her things. She had to have a boyfriend. You know, I'm, I'm mentoring a pastor's son right now. He is 14 years old. He thinks he's got to be married tomorrow. Got a girlfriend every day of the week. I saw you're too young to be thinking about all that. You got high school. You got all this other stuff. I'm going to be alone the rest of my life. I got to be alone the rest of my life. You you lost your mind. Going back to this young lady, Sister Bean, this young lady, she was the biggest problem in her church. Her pastor was more worried about her because. Her walk with God was shallow. She could tell. She was in and out all the time. Amen. She wouldn't show up for church. When she did show up for church, she played. She goofed off. But all of a sudden, one day, there was a right man of God that come through there, Brother Dennis. The right man of God come through there and preached to her about her sin and about what she was doing. Amen. They had a phenomenal service that night. And Brother Jess, that young lady crawled to the altar. You know, I've been around long enough to see people run to the altar. I've seen around long enough to see people. It used to happen. I'm wondering the reason why that people, the wicked, could sit in the congregation of the righteous and keep doing sin is because maybe there's sin with the righteous. Mm. Brother Jess, I didn't get an amen from you out of that one, buddy. But she sat there and she crawled to the altar and she realized her need. She realized that she needed God. Amen. And as a matter of fact, she prayed through Sister Bean to the Holy Ghost that night. Amen. Got baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. But that wasn't the end of that story. That young lady went to her pastor after being in the office. That pastor counseled her over the years and counseled her and counseled her. Hey, I want you to do better. I see greatness in you. I see where you're going. I see that God's got something for you. If you'll just leave that world alone, amen. If you just leave what you're... Mm. Let me ask you something. If we don't conquer the weights and the sins that are trying to destroy us, they will destroy us. We don't come. Look, if we're not better, amen, now look, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But if we're not careful, amen, and we don't. Mm. The sins and the stuff that bother us will end up consuming us. Her sin, Pastor, almost consumed her. But there was a man of God that come through there on fire for God, preaching against uh, fornication, against adultery, stuff that, man, you don't see people even preach on anymore. Amen. But it touched her heart, Brother Allen. It got a hold of her that she didn't even feel worthy enough to come up to the altar, so she crawled. But when she got up, Amen. You could tell she had prayed through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She wanted to call her pastor and her pastor's wife to side. And she looked at that man and that pastor and his wife. She said, you'll never have another problem out of me ever again. That's the God changes the Rachel that God wants to do for people. Do you know that young lady who he couldn't count on, who everybody in the whole church pretty much cast her off, she began to bid strength and she began to have a relationship with God. Before long, amen, she was singing in the choir. Before long, she wasn't just singing in the choir. She was in the praise team leading the choir. Before long, after two years, he could count on that young lady when he couldn't count on nobody else. 
As a matter of fact, she told the pastor and his wife, she said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. She said, I won't talk to a boy for a year. She said, I'll block every boy's number that I can block. She said, I won't go on a date with a boy for two years. As a matter of fact, God had blessed her so much. Amen. She was singing at big UPC conferences because God had raised her up from somebody who was just content with their walk with God. Somebody that was just content with church, but somebody who had some fire in them. Somebody that had some grit with them. Somebody that had some power in their ministry. Looked at her and told her you're doing wrong. Well, after two years, three years goes by, an evangelist comes through. He's got his eye on her. She's got his eye on him. They get married. They're passing a great church today. Right now, as I speak, do you know why? Amen. Because somebody, amen, challenged her. Somebody had to walk with God. Amen. That just, it just, that's what it's about tonight. Is your walk with God helping anybody? Come on, Sister Rachel. Who got this? Are you off tonight? You off? Oh, yeah, I love when you're on the piano. You know, you get stirred up when you're on the piano, amen. You do, you do. I like it. Can we stand tonight? I told you we wouldn't be long. But I want to ask you tonight, are you hot tonight? Because if you're somewhere in the middle, he said he'd rather you're cold. He'd rather you're cold. He said, but if you're somewhere in the middle. But tonight, God's trying to say, hey, look, come up a little higher. Just let us warm up just a little bit. As you play, sir. I'll pray for some of you. A country where no twilight. Shadows deepen Unending day where night shall never be A city where the storm clouds shall never gather Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throng upon the glassy sea to meet our loved ones and Crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. And when at last we see the face of Jesus before whose image all other loves will flee. And when they crown him, Lord of all, I'll be there. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder? And join the throng upon the glassy sea to meet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What we be? When we get over yonder and join the th-
strong upon the glassy sea to meet our loved one and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. A country where no twilight shadows deepen. An ending day where night shall never be. A city where the storm clouds shall never gather. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. What will it be when we get over yonder and we join the throng upon the glassy sea to meet our loved one and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. Come on, let's love the Lord a little bit tonight. Praise the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost. Why don't we lift our hands and let's just begin to pray and talk to God a moment. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I believe, God, that you're moving in the place right now. Come on, let's just begin to worship the Lord and talk to God. I believe there's somebody here that needs a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost in their life. Oh, hallelujah. I believe somebody's here tonight and you need a fresh touch of God. You ought to walk down to this altar with your hands raised up high and throw them up in the air and surrender to God. I believe you can be touched in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is what heaven means to me. I long to see the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, come on, we can do a little better than that. Let's just talk to God. Come on, create a prayer room in this place right now. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, you've got to pray if you want to have a move of God. You want a move of God, you've got to talk to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I praise you for your mighty works, God, your faithfulness, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All this other stuff I've been struggling with, God. All this other stuff I've been chasing after. It doesn't mean anything compared to eternity tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to see the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't need to miss an opportunity to let the Lord move upon you. Hallelujah. Well, we will not belabor it. And man, we had a tremendous service on Sunday. Tremendous move of God in the place. I believe this Sunday is going to be no different as it was tonight. I believe it's going to be on Sunday. I don't want you to miss. Amen. Don't be off doing dumb stuff, chasing ball games and everything else, be in the house of God. Amen. I know deer season starts up this weekend. Amen. Don't chase no deer to church. Amen. Get to the house of God. Amen. Let's have church and let's see a move of God and have revival. Amen. Let's pray together as we get ready to leave tonight. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you, God, for your presence that was here tonight. Lord, we thank you, God, for the word that we heard tonight. Lord, let it challenge us and we give you praise in Jesus' name.